Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Small Triumph Sports Library and Archives channel. This episode involves part one of the long promised update on my GT6 project, focusing in this case on the summer work that I've done on the body of the car. Truth be told, I had an episode ready, um, well, I don't know about ready, I had an episode together at the end of last week, uh, last Thursday, and I was reviewing it Friday morning, and it was pretty bad. As you know, if you've watched the channel any, my standards are definitely not that high, uh, so you know it was pretty bad. It was too long, it was a little bit glitchy, there were some different issues with it, so I decided to punt and start over again, and in the process I decided to divide this update into two different parts. I wish that overall I had something more interesting, exciting, and overall positive to share, um, but I sort of am where I am with the project at the moment. So let's uh, go ahead and get right to it. To keep this video relatively short, let me refer you to previous videos that include information about this project. I'll link to these videos below. First, I discuss my acquisition of the car, its history in my family, and some background about the car's condition in my introduction video. Then, in my first regular episode, I discuss some more background on the car, including both accurate information and a little bit of ill-advised speculation about the car's first and most severe accident, which occurred prior to the car coming into my family. The speculation based on limited and dubious evidence is the result of two of several bad habits I've demonstrated on occasion, rambling and mission creep. Regardless, I covered all of this background on the car on the way to discussing the work I did to clean up the bulkhead and replace the battery box. Finally, in episode 9, I discuss some of the work on and plans for the car as I evaluate the rear inner fender slash wing patch panels that are available for the car that I'll be using as I reconstruct the rear of the car's body. Other videos are obviously related to this project, but not necessarily to the work that I'm covering here. This video will cover the work I've done from May to the present. So while the focus of this video is on the work that I've done this summer, I do want to provide a little bit of background information. I'm not going to go into it in as much detail as I have in the previous videos I'm linking, but I still want to provide a little bit of background. So this is the car of the day I brought the GT6 home. The rear valance is pushed in, and if you look carefully, you can see the breaks in the lines of the drip rails and some of the distortions in the body. As I've discussed before, Large sections of the rear were sculpted out of body filler over mangled steel. As I'll show you in this video in more gruesome detail than ever before, much of the car aft the doors was a mess. And as I've said before, the hopeful note is that the car was on the road in this condition for a long, long time. I'll never make it perfect given the limitations of my bank account and skills, but I can make it a lot better and hopefully I'm on my way to doing that. Early in my time with the car, and especially as I began to tear it down, I realized just how bad the car's early accident was and just how terrible the subsequent repairs were. Nothing at the rear of the car was in anything like the shape it was in when it left the factory. So here are a few shots of the mess that I inherited. Here's a shot from the early days of stripping the body and starting to chisel away at some of the body filler. A little further along here, and you can see how wrinkly the rear of the roof is. Here you can see what a mess the rear corners of the car were and how distorted the boot floor was. Indeed, you can kind of see how the humps in the front corners of the boot floor were actually caved in. And here's a shot from inside the car after the bent up striker bracket assembly was removed. As you may have noticed in the first photo I showed, the hatch did shut, um, although not perfectly flush, of course. Um, might be a little bit surprising that it shut, uh, given this view. Here's the left-hand rear corner of the boot floor, which was the best of the two sides. Uh, you can see it's a little wrinkly. Um, it's a bit of a mess but it's certainly not as bad as the right-hand boot floor, um, which you can see the holes, you can see how the seam along the side is basically split um, already. 
um, which made my work a little bit easier, as I'll talk about in just a second. Total mess back there. So along the way, I decided I was going to have to just tear down the back of the car and make the new panels that I had purchased, um, boot floor, rear valance, rear inner wings, rear wings, all of that, all fit together as best I can. Um, when necessary, I'll have to use measurements from the workshop manual and from those with much straighter cars than what I'm working with. So I began drilling out the uh, spot welds for the right hand rear wing this summer uh, as I began to uh, pull the wings off the car. Then the left hand rear wing. The right hand rear wing bottom was basically pre-split for me as I've kind of already shown. Uh, it had been repaired, quote unquote, with body filler and it had a lot of rust. The left hand side was a little bit distorted but more intact and uh, required a lot more drilling. Finally I cut out the back 85% uh, ish uh, let's say of both rear wings leaving a little bit of support at the doors until I get everything ready to brace the door openings and remove the doors. Here's the left hand side. Um, you, know, you can see some of the distortion in there, but the back side isn't terrible. You can see where um, some water got in and it, it rusted along the bottom edge behind the uh, wheel arch, the bottom back of the wheel arch. Here's the right hand side, which was far and away the worst of the two sides for reasons that uh, I just referenced. By the way, if it isn't obvious enough, you can see some of the distortions in the top line of the rear wing here, such as the dip at the very rear and the peak about, eh, let's say roughly halfway up. This provides a good sense about how the back of the car was pushed down and in during its most severe accident. Here's where I started splitting the uh, rear inner wings then I roughly cut those out. I could have salvaged more of the outer wheel arch on this side, but I decided to do roughly the same operation on both sides, cutting well short of what the inner wing patch panels will cover so that I have plenty of margin for error. And then finally, around Memorial Day, I cut out the mangled boot floor and valance as a single unit. That is, I left the boot floor and valance attached to each other and removed them that way. Here are the removed bits. Uh, the rear wings weigh a ton because of all the body filler applied to them and the valance and blue floor, of course, have long been disastrously mangled as I've already shown you. As you might've guessed based on what I've done so far, I do have these outer wheel arch patch panels for the car for both sides. At this point, I intend to save um, a good bit of the original as much of the original as possible beyond what I've already cut off and cut and work in the patch panels around the good original metal. The very back portion of the outer wheel arches and most of the lips where they are spot welded to the rear wings will have to be replaced. This may prove a, a tedious and somewhat delicate process, but doesn't really scare me. Maybe it should, but doesn't really uh, scare me. Next, I remove the luggage floor support and unfortunately, thanks to overly aggressive chiseling of an old, terrible booger weld repair to one side at the end of a long day, I made a big hole in the inner wheel arch, which you can see there. Here's a close-up of it. Because it was such an odd shape and because the strengthener for the shock absorber is behind it, it really proved a challenging problem. Um, Given that I'm uh, an amateur welder, um, it really took me a couple of days to get it repaired uh, to my satisfaction, but eventually I got it where I was uh, okay with it. It's not beautiful, and obviously the luggage floor support has to be welded back in there. Um, at some point, it's not something that anybody's really going to see, so um, I feel okay about it. Okay, now let's go to a video that covers uh, some of the problems and short-term goals for the rear of the car. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about looming work here. Uh, first of all, the rear of the rear seat pan. <laughs> so uh, this is a um, mess. Starting with the bottom here where the seat pan is spot welded to the boot floor. Um, it's way out of shape and this is going to have to be brought back into shape with um, the new boot floor I have. Um, this is going to have to be patched here. A uh, long, long time ago, um, the boot floor was repaired uh, with booger welds um, right here. Um, up from the bottom edge, of course, uh, it's caved in here. It's kind of wavy. This is up higher than this. And uh, it's down here. I do think the outer edges of this are a little bit down in a straight car, but they are uh, further down and have a little bit of twist to them uh, from the accident damage. So there's a lot of uh, cleanup work that has to be done with that. The car will have to be uh, temporarily pulled from the frame. Uh, that'll give me an opportunity to straighten this out um, as best I can. And also, of course, check the frame. Uh, make sure that everything is uh, okay with the frame. And then the uh, body will go back on the frame for most of the body work. It needs to be done in terms of sort of um, reconstructing uh, the rear of the car. The uh, inner wheel arches, to use Triumph's term, um, a lot of times uh, the term uh, wheel tub uh, comes out of my mouth, but the uh, inner wheel arches back here in the back, the uh, accident pushed the boot floor in and kind of took the rear of these uh, inner wheel arches and kind of twisted them a little bit. So we have a crease here and it's split uh, down in here. It actually creased not directly up against the edge of, but pretty close to the edge of the inner strengthener for the shock absorber on this Rotoflex car. Uh, the accident actually split this. I've fully split this uh, this summer. Uh, but there were some gaps in here from the accident damage. It allowed some water ingress and a little bit of rust. Nothing too terrible. But um, I think to correct this, I'm going to end up slicing uh, some portion of this off and cleaning this up and trying to straighten this out. You can see it's pushed in here. This bottom is actually pretty close to being in the shape it should be in. Um, so that's actually not bad. The other side, I can't say the same thing. Uh, <laughs> you can see the split here again, uh, going down in here. And actually, I think I can kind of show you how uh, it's folded uh, over the edge um, of the strengthener for the shock absorber and then split a um, little bit um, outside of that. Uh, but again, boot floor pushed in here. This kind of pivoted up a little bit. Uh, we had some uh, gaps in here that allowed a little bit of water in. Got to get that cleaned up. This one, I think, again, probably slice it all the way off, try to get it straightened back into shape. It is a real mess down here at the bottom. It is way out of shape. And uh, I'm going to try to straighten that and see what, uh, what I can do with it. Um, I have thought long and hard about possibly getting some cutouts of the inner wheel arches to repair this with, but I think it would be ideal to be able to uh, work with what I have and be able to put it back in. Probably have to add some metal, you know, there'll be some stretching and loss of metal from the work that I have to do. So <clears throat> I'll have to take some measurements and um, kind of proceed carefully uh, seeing how everything fits together. Now uh, that's the situation at the rear. Now we need to step inside the car. I'll show you what happened to the inner wheel arches inside the car. So the boot floor being pushed in actually probably rolled this forward just a little bit. We got some puckering in here and some separation that allowed some water ingress and uh, 
then this bulged out. So as of right now, I think it's uh, fairly likely that I will be cutting out a panel here um, and trying to get it back into shape and welding it back in. Sorry, that's a little blurry. Um, but uh, that is probably what I'm going to try to do. It's the uh, same way on the other side here. Um, kind of see how it's uh, pushed out here um, and in here. Uh, and again, there's a gap that allowed a little bit of, uh, of rust. Um, I did want to point out that I did sandblast the top of the wheel um, arches, these inner wheel arches, and they cleaned up pretty nicely. You can see that there. You can see that there. Um, I did some hammering on the uh, inner wheel arches to try to get them back into shape. The outer part of the shape is pretty good, um, but uh, you know, in these areas and then on the back side, it's uh, quite rough. Um, I did some hammering to try to deal with some little issues in here. Uh, still needs some fine tuning, which is kind of generous. Um, it probably still needs a little bit of uh, of uh, hard swings uh, here and there, um, but it's not too bad uh, overall. Okay, so I, I rambled off the cuff in that video, um, but I don't think it's too bad. Um, I think most of the terminology was okay. I'm not sure my hand gestures uh, accurately uh, captured the uh, direction of the torsion applied at the rear of the car from the accident and, and things like that, but you get the gist, uh, hopefully. I'm gonna call it good enough. I did wanna talk a little bit more about the uh, splits uh, at the rear of the inner wheel arches, uh, just to kind of illustrate those uh, from the other side. So I have some images here. I believe you can make out the split a little bit better when there was still some paint in the area, but you can see that split at the edge of the strengthener for the rear shock. Um, again, the split did not occur exactly at the edge. It's folded under a little bit there, as I showed earlier. Um, but the split is uh, near the edge, but it's easy to see here how the boot floor being pushed in um, pinched uh, this part of the car, caused a, a split in that area. So there it is when it still had paint on it. This is what it looks like stripped. And here's a quick view of the big picture from the other side. Again, that's the, obviously the right-hand side of the car. The left hand side, here's an image with uh, paint still on it. Um, that split might even be a little bit messier than the other side. Here it is stripped. And here it is in the in the big picture from the from the other side. All right, with that uh, adequately covered, hopefully. Uh, let's go to more of a big picture overview uh, of the body of the car. I am going to start by pointing out uh, one additional issue with the uh, inner wheel arches, which obviously is an area of the car that needs a lot of attention. I'm also going to show you the B post area, which is uh, a real mess uh, from the uh, fenders, the, the rear wings being pushed around. Um, so you get a better sense of that and I'll talk about uh, what I have actually accomplished so far as well. Some of which I covered in previous videos, but uh, when you're talking about all the work that you have to do, sometimes this gets dull. So reflect on what you've already accomplished. Underneath here, I wanted to show that the accident actually pushed the roof supports down into those inner wheel arches um, on both sides. I know there's always some distortion there from the heat and the welding, but uh, it seems pretty clear to me that the accident caused those roof supports to be pushed down maybe as much as a quarter inch or so 
in some areas. I'm not sure if I'll be able to clean that up effectively. Uh, we shall see. Little, um, little more walking around here. You can see a lot of the little distortions uh, in the roof. Um, there at that uh, rear window. Um, I did want to show that the accident actually caused a lot of chaos in the B post, much more than um, I would have expected. Um, there's a lot of distortion uh, around the door latches there and the inner rear wing. It's even torn there, you can see. That can be cleaned up. I'm, I don't find that overly scary, but it's going to take uh, a, a fair bit of work to get that straight. I have uh, cleaned all the rust and uh, out and primed the uh, the footwell areas there. Um, cleaned up and straightened the floorboards, uh, probably close to as well as I'm going to. I did have to patch a few pinholes on the driver's side floorboard, um, but managed to do that without too much difficulty. And as I've already shown in a previous video, I've cleaned all the rust off the bulkhead and put in the battery box. Still need to do some seam sealing there, but that is uh, pretty clean and in and, and good shape. Still, overall, a uh, pretty big mess with uh, lots of work to do. So that's a lot of the good and the bad of it when it comes to the body work that needs to be done. Uh, obviously most of the bad in terms of what I've covered here is at the rear of the car, which requires total reconstruction. Uh, it's quite a challenge, especially for someone at my skill level, but I'm continuing to plug away, uh, edit, and uh, continue to make strides. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Next step, is really to get the body off the frame uh, temporarily. Um, I have got to get the back of the rear seat pan straight and I can only do that with the body off the frame because the frame is in the way of the things I need to do to try to get that the way it needs to be um, overall. So I wanna get the body off the frame and try to do the work that I need to do with the frame out of the way and then I expect to put the body back on the frame for the larger reconstruction of the rear of the car. That seems to me to be the uh, best, safest uh, approach for the uh, extensive work that I need to do um, back there. So for the short term, um, you know, one goal is to get the body off the frame and get that rear seat pan uh, straightened out. And ideally, my original goal was by the end of summer to have the entire bottom of the rear of the car mocked up uh, so that I had everything where it would kind of fit together. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens uh, with that. I doubt that I make it. I've got about two and a half to three weeks left um, before the academic year begins to really start and uh, my attention is going to be diverted primarily elsewhere and this will be more of a uh, most weekends type of project. There is one other thing that I, I want to uh, address briefly and it is the one part of the work that's ahead that does uh, scare me and that is the rear of the roof which as you saw my roof is mangled at the rear. The roof is actually very clean uh, in terms of rust from front to back, but as you saw, uh, the back of the roof line is uh, mangled, distorted. Uh, it's not, not good. So as I showed in an earlier video, I did acquire some patch panels for this part of the car. You can see them there on the screen. Um, but I think what to work in, how best to work it in, and managing to work anything in without causing problems uh, may be beyond my fairly basic skills. Uh, I do have a club friend or two with extensive restoration experience. Um, I may be able to lean on some, and uh, I, there's a pro or two 
uh, when it comes to Triumph Restoration uh, in my area. So I'll have to review all resources and, and take a decision on that part of the project. But uh, that part actually uh, does scare me. The other stuff requires a lot of work. Um, it's probably going to be tedious at times. I'm probably going to make some mistakes that I have to redo, but it doesn't really scare me. This is the part of the job that actually does uh, scare me a bit. So that's the overview of the bodywork for my GT6 project. The focus in this video has been on um, immediate areas of focus, uh, shorter term uh, projects. I haven't covered everything. For example, the front cross member on the frame needs attention. Uh, the bonnet needs a fair bit of work, but those are things for further down the line. It is my hope that uh, you'll find something interesting or entertaining in this video. Maybe I've just managed to make you feel very sorry for me, all the work I've done and all the work I still have to do. And if so, that's something. But of course, part of the reason why I make a video like this is to put things out there with the potential of getting uh, good feedback, good advice from viewers. So if you see that I'm doing something wrong or you think there's a better way for me to approach something, please uh, reach out and let me know. Feel free to put something in the comment section. Um, it is really important to me that, um, you know, this is not just an opportunity for me to share what I'm doing and potentially share some information that may help others, but also for me to get information that may help me. And as I've demonstrated already, uh, I'm not perfect and I, I don't, don't know everything. Um, I have tried to research these things. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos myself uh, on the way to diving into this project, but I don't know everything and uh, we all need help. So uh, if you have something to offer, um, please uh, do so. I've taken on this project for one thing, because I'm obviously a longtime um, Spitfire enthusiast. I've had and driven a Spitfire for many years, and I've long appreciated Michelotti's fastback design for the Spitfire. I think it's a beautiful car. I think it's an interesting car uh, with very interesting qualities as it uh, you know, evolved from the original Spitfire GT prototype uh, through to the various iterations of the GT6. So part of it is I just think it's a cool car. But also, as I've already discussed, uh, there's a lot of family history with the particular car that I'm working on. And so the car means a lot to me from that perspective too. I dive into a project like this, um, not with any sense that, you know, it's an investment. I don't treat a restoration project like this as an investment. I do it out of uh, something more like love. Um, I do it out of an appreciation for the car itself, for its place in history, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, as anybody especially a hobbyist who's taken on a restoration project like this, knows uh, you very quickly blow your budget uh, on a project like this. And if you have kind of a balance sheet mentality about it, it will drive you completely nuts. Uh, when you do it out of love, you know, your calculus is different. And, you know, I'm on a budget. Most people restoring a car are on some kind of budget. It's not that you throw all caution to the wind and max out all your credit cards and all that in the process. You have to be responsible about it. Um, but you feel very differently about it. You know, maybe it doesn't go as fast as you want to. Maybe you can't, you know, pick up all the parts and pieces that you need as fast as you want to. But you're constantly moving toward a goal um, out of just a respect and appreciation uh, for the car and, uh, and its place in history and you know, those kinds of, of, of things. Now, I'm actually at a pause in, in the bodywork of the car because of an unexpected and frustrating issue with the engine. And that is going to be the topic of part two of my GT6 update. 
a video that I hope to have uh, completed and posted pretty soon. Uh, so I'll be working on that um, over the next couple of days and, and try to get that posted. In the meantime, cheers.